Hi, this is David E. Hilscher. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Today, I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people, especially what I call who I call intellects, the people who buy into all the mainstream science, particle physics, and all that, they come to me and say, okay, what if, what if it's all wrong? Why doesn't everybody know it? Why isn't everybody complaining and saying, hey, this is all wrong? Why? If something's wrong, the scientists get together, they find out what's, one, what's wrong and come up with something new. But there are thousands Thousands, tens of thousands of universities, millions of teachers out there talking about how all the part, the standard model in particle physics, in cosmology, plate tectonics, and we've been we prove this every day. Well, we're going to talk about why, in fact, we can be in a place where this is a, all a house of cards. And I'm going to talk about why we are where we are today. And this, I got a lot of this from my from making my movie. I had to think about all these things. And in my movie, I talk about these things. First of all, what's the driving? What drives the world? Money. If you you can't go and build particle accelerators for <clears throat> billions of euros or billions of dollars or do experiments without money. Why is particle physics? If it's all wrong, if we have to throw almost all of it out, which many of us believe, why is it still going on? Why are people still throwing money at it? It's real simple. It's called the atomic bomb. In the 1940s, these nerds, these physics physicists, and e equals mc squared famous equation in its inspiration, e equals mc squared, by the way, is not the equation for the atomic bomb. It's a concept that all mass is energy, but we're not even going to talk about that because I can make you doubt that in three words. Watch my film. Um, the atomic bomb is world power. We, the entire world, worries about if a country is going to have the atomic bomb. That's, that's the most important, most powerful thing you can have. And who does that? Theoretical physics, physics physicists in the beginning did that. So what happens? These f theoretical physicists latch on to this. They start making theories about this, and they keep inventing particles, inventing ideas, and the model is really not a model. It's all an invention. It's a house of cards. But people, governments, will throw money into it out of fear of being behind. In fact, the Higgs boson, which is supposedly discovered, but it was invented and, of course, pretended to be discovered. What <laughs> They believe it. I'm not saying that they think they've discovered it, but regardless, what they've done is they got all that money. Why are, do they get that money? Because they're looking for perhaps the next big thing, the next powerful bomb, the next powerful particle. If you harness, if you find the God particle, maybe you will be the biggest world power. And Europe decided to do it uh, ahead of the United States, and then then when that happened, we got all these articles about we. We lost. We're falling behind. Falling behind what? A unicorn search? An expensive one? Well, thank goodness for some reason we didn't build that giant particle accelerator here in the United States and waste our time because all particle physics since the 1930s or even before that, in my opinion, should be thrown out. It's all invented. But it doesn't matter. The money's coming from governments who are fearful of some other country and their th fear theoretical physicists finding the next thing. Every time they find something these days in the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years, nothing's happened because they're unicorns. This is Harry Potter. Harry Potter's just as real as particle physics. So that's one of the reasons. And it is a house of cards. And where does that come from? Well, it comes from, I'm a nerd. I work in the supercomputing research. That's one of my areas, language and computers. Um, I love physics. I love cosmology. I, I've got a degree in math. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a nerd. I'm a computer programmer. Well, we nerds want to be loved. We were out ostracized when I was a kid. I was picked on because I was smart, blah, blah, blah. And when that happens, we want to show the whole world that we're really smart. So we will. a lot of us will go to MIT and become an astrophysicist so I can go back to my uh, the party, my, my class party, and say, oh, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, look at the class nerd. Oh, uh, he's an astrophysicist at MIT. <gasps> Whoa. 
That guy's really smart, isn't he? Yeah, we, we put these guys on pedestals. We think they're superhuman brains. And, and all they do is talk a double talk. They talk in paradoxes. And it's not because we can't understand it, but that's what they sell. Their revenge is that they say, you don't understand these paradoxes, which are impossible to understand because they're paradoxes. It's like saying, this is three, but it's two. There's two spaces, but it's three things. Uh, which one is it? Well, there isn't no real, a real answer. What they give us are paradoxical, nonsensical things like the Big Bang. Oh, the Big Bang, the universe was a P. Well, what's around it? Not universe. So they create these paradoxes. They create these problems that they put way up there and they say, you dumb little normal person won't understand it unless you come to our school. And then, of course, if you go against Einstein or you go against the Big Bang, they sit you down and say, do you want a career in this, in this field? You don't do this. So they weed you out right away. They've ostracized many people who I now know are great, who are great scientists working outside the mainstream. So what do we have? We have nerds who want to be loved. When they want to be loved, they want to be put on a, a, a pedestal. They don't care if all this stuff is nonsense. A lot of them probably inside, deep down inside, know it. But they're there and they go do their stuff. They do their particle accelerators. They all make parties for themselves. They're big, giant machines that countries throw money at. And and then they make these things and they pretend to find something because if you if you make a million uh, photographs a second with your computer of collisions, you're going to find what you want. Believe me, you're going to find what you want. And I won't even get into all the wrong assumptions about how they do that, but that's what they do. So we are into a state where we are at a crossroads, just like politically we're at a crossroads where the rich have come so rich and the middle class and all of us have suffered for so long that it's a time for revolutions. The same thing is happening in physics and cosmology. Even the physicists and the cosmologists are starting to talk about there is uh, perhaps, because they're not getting anywhere, nothing practical is coming out of anything they do in the last 50, 60 years, they're going, well, maybe someone could come along like the next Einstein and tell us we're all wrong and this is and we didn't get this right and here's what's right well that may happen uh, there are people working on models doing that i know i'm one of them but that's not why i'm here to promote myself i'm here to tell you that we look for truth anybody's model is going to be wrong eventually it's going to be better than what ha what had gone before but it's not going to be right so it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no geniuses. I'm not a genius. My father's not a genius. Even if our model becomes the standard model, it doesn't matter because we're just humans and we do our best at trying to make these models. But right now we're in a place where we are talking about physics, where you have particles that have strangeness, upness, downness, color, and they don't mean blue. Half spin, my father loves that one, and I love that too. He's the one that points out. Think about it. Our particles half spin. What the does that mean? Uh, we have uh, multi universes, multiverses. We have brains that, that go together, and big bangs happen when they touch. Just shoot me. Um, oh, the best one's quantum mechanics because they don't have a model for light. They don't have a model for the electron. They don't have a model for uh, the way any of this stuff works: gravity, light, electromagnetism, all that. We do, and we can explain those equations, but they don't, so they have really bizarre things. Their assumptions lead them to thinking there's a particle that knows what the other particle's doing on two sides because they've only sent one through, and like there's two. Uh, no. All of this is physical. The universe is physical. These things are, and they have history erasing um, experiments because they now say, the only reason that happens is because you see it. And if I see it from a, my binoculars, see you from a telescope, that photon coming from somewhere is going to go this way around the planet, a star, and this way around this when you look at it in a star. And so this is now there's some consciousness of the whole universe that all these conscious. This means we are at the end when science has become a religion. That is, if you try to go against it, they come at you, which is true. It, when they are talking such nonsense that, that the average person picks up the newspaper and goes, oh, wake me up when it's real. That's where we are. And that's why we have thousands of us who have looked into this, some of people, for 60 years now, 
And believe it or not, thousands of people have come up with the same conclusions about what's wrong with relativity, what's wrong with the Big Bang, what's wrong with plate tectonics, what's wrong with particle physics, etc., etc. So that's where we are, and that's why we don't have a giant revolution that's saying, okay, this is all wrong, because we need to have something to replace it, and some of us are working on that. Um, we are ready for reality, we are ready, and we are a silent majority. That is, the people who are now listening to all this mumbo-jumbo, they don't buy it. Most of the scientists don't go into this field. In fact, call up any university. I gave my mom a list of 50 universities here in the United States and in Canada. Find relativity experts. Couldn't find any. None. Kip Thorne was one. Nobody else, well, well they sort of, you know, he, he's our relativity guy. Nobody special. Why? They don't, nothing comes out of it. No, GPS doesn't use it. No, it doesn't. It shows its flaws. It doesn't support it. Ask Ron Hatch has 30 patents in it. This is what's happening. This is where we are. That's why I'm out here, because I'm giving a voice to the silent majority, which is 99.99% of the engineers and scientists don't believe in multiverses, don't believe in brains. They don't even necessarily believe in the Big Bang because it doesn't make sense. Why would everything come together in part? Just because you say it, just because you come up with theoretical, and we have no physicality. We don't know what light is. We don't know what gravity is. We don't know what electromagnetism is. We don't know what uh, magnetic fields are. We don't even know really what uh, electricity. It, it's an electron that doesn't go only meters a second, but it's going the speed of light, supposedly. Then it turns into a, magically turns into a photon on its way out of an of antenna. <laughs> Guys. That's why this exists. That's why my YouTube channel exists. I've been in this since the early 1990s. I can voice this stuff. I can help you look into it and give you answers. The, the group of scientists we have have great answers to questions. Oh, I'll give you one. Oh, somebody comes, well, if it's not the Big Bang, what is it? Well, guess what? We see stars. Do we see stars being born? Yes. Do we see stars dying? Yes. Do we see galaxies being born? Do we see, see uh, solar systems dying and being born? Well, that's the circle of life. That is not a Big Bang. So it's an eternal universe. It's eternally big. It's infinitely big. Every time we get another telescope, and another time we look further out, we see more. So the answer is simple. The universe has been around. There wasn't a big bang. Oh, well, then why do we see everything accelerating? Well, because we see light is redshifted. That's like, like when a, uh, a ambulance goes by. Well, we have answers for that. Light is a physical thing. That's what we think. It's not just something that's magical. Because the magic part is what they want you to believe so the nerds can stay in power and they can seem like they're smarter than you and they're not. They're playing in a unicorn's world. I can go on and on, but we do have real answers. So, have any questions? Send me, send me a question. I will be happy to answer it. So, I can keep going, but this gives you an idea of where we are, why we're here, and there are, like I said, thousands and thousands and thousands of we have a catalog of over one person in France has over 5,000 people working outside the mainstream and they're not all surfers 20% of them almost 20% of them have PhDs they come from universities like MIT and in it's prestigious universities in Europe and in Russia and we have people who are ex uh, or retired NASA scientists we have some of the most brilliant minds and they're working outside but they don't get support because the house of cards will fall. And all these people that I'm hanging out with, they're going to be the new wave. And that's why you should be with us, because we think critically. No one's a genius. We have lots of smart people. We don't worship. If you get up in front of us and talk, we don't care if you are the head of physics of Cambridge or you are a garbage man or a garbage woman or if you are a professor of some, some uh, uh, science college, or if you are 
uh, a person who's who was a real estate person who now likes we've got one guy who is a supreme court ex a retired supreme court justice we have one of those people in our group we thinking critically and going at this you don't have to have a degree in fact we know that change comes from the outside never comes from the inside so that's enough for today i could go on and on and on but that's 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 enough for now and always remember don't take what anyone says on faith stay critical stay thinking if you take the time to look at what we are talking about on your own use your own noggin and not be afraid you will find out we have a lot of problems in the standard model and in cosmology and you also find a lot of great people out there who have some much better ideas. So I'm Dave DeHilser, your science therapist. Ciao for now.